Hey guys, this is K2's Retro Workshop again, and it's GPU June, so today we're going to be working with this Slot 1 motherboard. It might not look like much at first glance, but this motherboard is inside my most used retro machine. This is an MSI 6168. It has a 440ZX chipset, a Pentium 3, and an onboard Voodoo 3 2000. This model came with 8 megs of video RAM, and if I'm being honest, it does everything it needs to without a problem. I use it for burning ROMs, playing pretty much all my Windows 98 games, and it's been reliable for me for many years now. All that being said, this machine is due for some upgrades. Some are normal, like adding a front panel connector here that will keep me from having to pepper my motherboard with front panel connectors. And it's going to get a faster processor, more RAM, and I already did a recap on this, as you can see from all the red Worth Electronics caps I like to use. But this is GPU June, so our video is going to revolve around a more unorthodox upgrade. I installed a PCI Voodoo 3 2000 into this system to test the performance difference between 8 and 16 megs of video RAM. The 8 megabyte card was consistently slower at stock clock speeds, despite the faster AGP interface but the 8 megabyte card could be coaxed to pull ahead if it was overclocked. So let's mess this motherboard up. Just kidding, at least I hope at this point in the video. Uh, this is a pretty rare motherboard. It comes up for sale every once in a while, but not very often, and almost always in the 8 megabyte variant that I have here. In an old Falconfly archive I found online, there was one user that mentioned having a 16 megabyte version, and he gave part numbers for the RAM chips that are installed on it. Those chips happen to be the same ones found on this Matrox card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the SG RAM from this motherboard, and I'm going to transplant the 16 megabytes of SG RAM from this Matrox card to this motherboard to give me an onboard Voodoo 3 2000 AGP with full 16 megabytes of memory. As with my 486 SLC upgrade, I've tried to do as much research into this as possible to make sure that the upgrade is even doable in the first place. I verified that the extra address line needed for larger capacity chips is, in fact, connected. This is an important detail that corroborates a theory I had in my head about the two versions of this motherboard. From both a manufacturing and design perspective, it doesn't make sense to design two boards for a simple option difference such as video RAM. This got me looking at the data sheets for both the memory and the Voodoo chip itself. As it turns out, there's a simple way to change between 8 and 16 megabytes, so all the manufacturer would have to do is change memory chips and move a single resistor. To make the video card see 16 megabytes versus 8 megabytes, we need to change a hardware jumper for a reset configuration latch. The data sheet calls out using 4700 ohm resistors to make the hardware latch, and there are 4700 ohm resistors on the board here that can be moved to connect to a pin, either ground or 3.3 volts, which correspond to zero and one respectively. These will be the hardware latches for configuring the Voodoo chip. I've already gone ahead and marked the one and zero side of each register, though we don't know exactly what each one is. The registers that are already a one, we don't need to look at because the register we want to change is currently a zero for eight megabit, and we want it to be a one for 16 megabit. That's the bank size, and these are double bank chips, so two banks of 8 megabit gives 16 megabits total, which is 2 megabytes. This upgrade simply doubles that. This is why we can get away with only four SG RAM chips over the eight seen in a lot of cards, which use single banked memory as well. None of these register settings will cause damage if they're done wrong, it just won't work or won't do what we want. According to the pinout for the Voodoo chip, the input for the register we need to change, HD8, is furthest left. So this area should be where we need to do our looking for our register. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to benchmark this guy with the hardware I currently have. This will set our baseline for the entire upgrade. After the 16 megabyte upgrade, we'll do it again, see what improvements we get. And finally, we'll do the 1.2 gigahertz CPU upgrade and overclock the GPU to get the maximum performance that we can from the system. In stock form, it already overclocks to 166, so the goal is 183 without glitches. Maybe the new faster na 6 nanosecond memory will allow us to stay at 183. I'm going to do a separate video soon showing the basic tools and everything that I use for doing this kind of work on motherboards, as it seems to be a common theme on my channel at the moment. So I won't bore you with an hour of me soldering and desoldering stuff. 
Uh, we'll, I'll just briefly go over it. The first step is desoldering the donut. We've got the four memory chips here removed. I had one little bypass cap here try to move on me, but uh, got that back in its place. Doesn't look like I melted anything too bad here. So uh, let's put on the uh, bigger chips. All right, so we should be able to smoke test this system as it's configured. We've got the four megabyte memory modules installed. You can see the two megabyte modules here. And we should be able to do this because as long as the address 10 line stays low, which it looks like it did during my experimentation, uh, the other address lines can do their thing and the memory will act normal. See, it's an 8 megabyte system and everything looks fine. So the memory is working like it should be at the moment. So now we go on to the fun task of finding out which hardware register we need to change. And then hopefully we'll have our 16 meg system. All right, so everything's cleaned up, and now we're ready to move our register resistor. I believe this guy right here is the one we need to move. This guy needs to be moved here to make this a 0 to a 1. The next register over from it, as far as like the location on the chip goes, is a 1, and I believe that's this guy. So this from here to here would make this a 0. So I want to move this guy, and I'm going to do that right now. So as usual with these projects, I've run into the situation where my first inkling was not correct. Um, it didn't do anything at all when I did that, so I moved on to the next register I have to change. You'll see here, when this uh, boots up, that it's registering as a 16 megabyte video system, and it looks perfectly fine. Um, however, I think this register is actually the register for telling the Voodoo card that there's eight chips installed. And this opens up an opportunity to see uh, one of the ways the Voodoo card works. It appears when it's not doing accelerated graphics that it's just using bank zero. And right now, when we're going into the Windows desktop and it's going to be accelerated, it's trying to use both banks. But half the chips aren't there, so it's missing half of our video data. And I just thought that was interesting and thought I'd show that to you real quick. On to try some more resistors. Okay, this has been very interesting. It turns out that the one selection that I showed you earlier where you had the distortion once you booted into Windows was the only register selection I could make that would give us 16 megabytes on the screen, and that's what we're currently set to. But we get the distortion when we go into acceleration mode. So I started looking at things and I started speculating, what if it's already got the 16 megabit selection because I couldn't get any of the zeros to ones to make it see what we needed to. So I went and I changed one of my 1s to a 0, thinking that would be my 16 megabit to 8 megabit change, and it was right. We showed 4 megabits of video memory. So what I decided to do is go back to the drawing board and look. There's got to be a way to make this motherboard see 16 megabytes. And since this was the only mode to do it, we got it. But as you can see, it now works. And it works because of this. In on this motherboard, in order to make it look like 
there are eight SG RAM chips versus four. I'll show a zoomed in picture here. The chip select line doesn't really do a whole lot um, because these bank these chips are basically directly wired in, so there is no chip select for the bank. And so what they've done on this motherboard is that address line 11 connects to the chip select line and then whenever you go to switch banks you just toggle that last bit and it looks like a whole new bank of memory. So we can now switch between the two banks, still doing air quotes here, by just um, switching the cable select and, or the chip select and as you can see it works great. So now we have a 16 megabyte Voodoo 3 2000 on this board. And I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, reinstall this in its case, do some benchmarks, and we'll look at some comparisons. There were two benchmarks in particular that absolutely fell on their faces with the eight megabytes of memory that was great with 16 megabyte, even with a PCI Voodoo in the same system. And that is the four megabyte and eight megabyte texture benchmarks. As you can see, there's a significant difference in performance when the GPU isn't constantly fetching textures from memory. The difference is over 200 frames per second versus 30. 3D Mark 99 gets a bump from 5,530 to 6,122, a difference of 10.7%. 3D Mark 2000 jumps from 3,664 to 4,195. It's a difference here of 14.5%. These synthetics, however, are nothing compared to the real-world performance changes due to this upgrade. The Unreal intro gives us a boost of 99.7%, going from an average of 34.4 frames per second to 68.7. That is with nothing but an 8 megabyte to 16 megabyte upgrade, stock 143 megahertz clock. Quake 3 goes from 42.9 to 62.4. It's amazing a 46% increase over 8 megs of video RAM. There was a lot of time spent fetching textures than I previously thought. Here we see the results of the overclock. It won't reliably do 183 MHz still, but that's not surprising as the data sheets all call out a different CPU part for the 183 units, which indicates they were binned, so it's unlikely that any non-3500 will do 183 reliably. On the left, we have stock at 143 MHz, and on the right, we have 166. Overclocking gets us a nice little bump for free. I'm sure I could get this card to play nice in the mid-170s I have before, but I'm going to leave it alone instead of trying to change that last, like, 10 MHz. Well, there it is. A rare Voodoo motherboard with an even rarer upgrade. With more memory upgrades and the full recap this machine has now it's ready for many more years of reliable service like i said before i use this machine almost daily and i love the oem motherboard in the boring oem style case for my 3dfx gaming rig the huge performance gains with this modification will make it just that much more enjoyable to use and that's all i have for you today so enjoy this unreal castle flyby rendered in 3dfx glide and captured directly from rgb output Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them below. Happy GPU June, and I'll see you next time.